want to say we're also announcing Bill's endorsement of the campaign, which is really great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You can always use my name where it will help you. Okay. If it's going to hurt you, disavow my existence. <laughs> and when they come to torture you, give me up. It's not worth it. So, um, Bill is one of the people you would call Mr. San Diego. He grew up here. He's from San Diego, cares so much about San Diego. And what I love about Bill, you know, very few of us will ever be the 50, one of the 50 greatest at what we do in our lives, but Bill Walton is someone who could say that about basketball, and that's really quite an accomplishment. But even better, he's taken his celebrity and come back uh, to give back to his community, whether th through the NBA players or challenge athletes who just got on the rides, uh, finished with the ride from San Francisco for charity. They're raising all sorts of money for uh, amputees and other folks who compete in athletics. So I'm so proud to have Bill's endorsement, very excited, uh, and um, I really appreciate everyone's help today. And so. Uh, Oh, hi, Todd. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Todd's, Todd's Another one of my heroes. Todd's a minor celebrity <laughs> today. Models. Todd yeah. Gloria yeah, yeah, represents us magnificently. I, I, Thank you. I do now see a number of the Todd squad out here, so I appreciate that, too. But anyway, I'm really happy you're all helping me out. I'm really happy to have uh, Bill Walton on the team. And Bill, you want to say any final last words before we get him going? Why are we here? As we congregate to educate, advocate, illuminate, but also to celebrate, always asking the biggest questions in our lives. Who are we? What are we doing? What do we stand for? And most importantly, where are we going? I'm the luckiest guy in the world. Not only do I know Scott Peters and Todd Gloria and Lynn Peters, not only do I know Ted and Robert and Seamus, not only do I know Mary Ann, I live in San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> and even though it's the dead of winter today, oh my gosh. I was touched in my life. Born in San Diego to incredible parents who love me more than they cared about themselves. My dad was a social worker by day, an adult educator by night, and a music teacher on the weekends. My mom, our town's librarian. And it was incredible because as a young boy growing up, little Billy, with his red hair and his freckles and his big nose and his goofy, nerdy looking face and his horrendous speech impediment, couldn't say a word till I was 28 because I stuttered so badly. Now that I've learned how to talk a little bit, I hope you have a good chair within arm's reach. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my favorite kind of clock. Eight o'clock. <laughs> Get going. But the good fortune for me didn't just happen with my parents. I was touched by a brilliant young man when I was eight years old. How old are you, young lady? Oh my gosh, I thought you were 15. I was <laughs> When I was eight, going to school here in San Diego, I was touched by a young man who was my coach. His name was Rocky. Rocky grew up in National City, went to Sweetwater High School, and became a San Diego City fireman. Rocky had three children of his own. We all went to the same school. And Rocky was dissatisfied. You. Dissatisfied with the way things were going for children in the afternoon after school was over. So Rocky, as a volunteer, as you are today, Rocky, he decided to make things better. Rocky, he organized a sports program at our school. That was in 1956 when Rocky started, and he coached every grade, every student, every level, every sport, all year round, starting in 1956. I started with Rocky four years later in 1960 when I was eight years old. Today. 56 years later, Rocky is still there All right. every day as a volunteer. And that's the challenge that all of us have in our lives. What Todd, what Scott have committed to making this world a better place. And when you think about the enormity of our problems, the enormity of the challenges, never forget that it starts with each and every individual person.
the foundation, the foundation of our community. The strength of a team is the strength of an individual. And if you don't believe that it's about the foundation, just look at my athletic career. Because even though I'm somewhat tall, <laughs> I was born with structural congenital defects in my feet. And in sports and athletics, it's all about the feet. It's all about that foundation. When that foundation went bad, everything up the line eventually breaks down. And that's why I'm here today, because Scott, Todd, Gloria, they represent the foundation of our community. And if you ever think for a moment that you as an individual are too small or too inconsequential to make a difference, if you ever think that, you have never spent the night in bed with a mosquito. <laughs> and so, as we go out to walk our neighborhoods, you have the burden, the responsibility, the duty, and the obligation, as we all do, to stand up and make a difference. What well, Scott, and everything I say about Scott, I mirror that for Todd Gloria. But Todd, he's already in, and we're so lucky for that. We're in the battle right now of our lives. And so as I focus in on Scott Peters and I know what he stands for, I know his foundation. Growing up, the son of ministers, going to an outstanding academic institution, Duke University, coming to San Diego, and dedicating his life to the community, to the team, to making it happen for other people. And when you look at what Scott Peter stands for in terms of his position on the environment, on the economy, on the role of government in our world, the importance of business growth and development, and all the things that matter critically. Because some people will tell you that none of this stuff matters. And those people are just trying to lull us to sleep and think that it's inconsequential who does win. And that is as far from the truth as you can get. Because when we elect Scott Peters to be our next congressman, we are going to be able to move forward. And that is the greatest responsibility that we have. Now that I'm old and in the way, now that I can no longer fight with my body. I also have realized that the biggest fights and the most important battles are the ones for the spirit and the soul and the future of our team. And ultimately, our team is our family, is our town, is our state, county, and our country. And when I sit here today to be able to proudly endorse Scott Peters for the 52nd district here that represents the unbelievable majesty of what we have. But I also look at the shortcomings. The shortcomings that Scott Peters is willing to stand tall, to fix, to repair, to change course. Because you never know how the game of life is going to play out. Who would have ever thought that little Billy, growing up, would go on to play basketball for three of the greatest teams in the history of basketball? Who would have ever thought that little Billy, when he was 24 years old, at the top of his profession, champion of the NBA, MVP of the NBA, the foundation, my foot broke, and I could never play again. So little Billy decided, in a lightning bolt flash of inspiration searing across the smoking crater that's my mind, realized <laughs> that, hey, when you're 6'11", you have red hair, a big nose, freckles, a goofy, nerdy-looking face, you can't talk, and you're a lifelong deadhead, having been to now more than 832 Grateful Dead concerts. <laughs> <laughs> that's not in your bio. That television is the only career possible. <laughs> 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 
they looked at me and they said, that'll never work. <laughs> when they tell you that, you know you're on the right path. <laughs> and so when you're going door to door today, and when you're trying to convince people of the value of joining our team, know that you're selling Scott Peters, you're selling America, you're selling the dream that tomorrow is going to be better. And that's going to happen because of who Scott Peters is and what he stands for and what he's willing to stand up for and fight. And look what he's doing constantly for our city. When he was a city council president, his battles to make Petco Park what it is, the North Embarcadero, the cleanup of San Diego Bay, the focus on education, the focus on programs that work that help people. It is so nauseating to me in our world today when I hear the political rhetoric of the day being all about rugged individualism, being all bootstrapping, we're going to get this done on our own. Nonsense. It doesn't work that way. It's about the team. And when you go out today, and when you're looking at those people, you have to believe in the value of what you're doing and contributing to making our team better. Because ultimately, while you're selling Scott Peters, while you're selling a vision and a dream, ultimately what you're doing is selling yourself. And when you believe, and when you have that foundation, and when you have that commitment, and when you realize that no matter how hard you work and how long you go and how hard you push into everything you're going into, that it's still 8 o'clock and we haven't <laughs> even gotten started yet. <laughs> Scott mentioned the Challenged Athletes Foundation. We just got back last night from a 620-mile bike ride from San Francisco, Golden Gate Bridge, to San Diego. We raise money to buy wheelchairs and prosthetics for people that don't have arms and legs. And when I heard people talk about, as this election season is just on fire right now, when they talk about the, the safety net as becoming a, a hammock, those are people who have no clue as to what's going on in the real world. The real world was us riding our bikes to raise $1.5 million to buy these wheelchairs and prosthetics. And while I've done this ride before and I've ridden my bike a lot, and every time you're out there in the frontline battles, there's always a life-changing experience. It, it, it never is the same. You don't know where it's going to come from or who it's going to be. This time, it was our great friend Lance. Lance, who is a Marine. But Lance has been paralyzed, quadriplegic for 18 years now, sitting in a chair, unable to get up. And you talk about someone who needs help, Lance can't do anything by himself. But Lance, through the sacrifice, through the discipline, through the commitment, and through the willingness to share, to share in the glories of life, all the things that Scott Peter stands for, Lance was able to get a special, custom, one-of-a-kind hand cycle that someone else sits in the front and Lance sits in the back and he's able to just move his arms a little bit. And Lance came down that coast 200 miles of the 620 miles. And it was absolutely incredible. Lance had, for 18 years, not been able to feel the wind, not been able to feel the sun, or the sweat, or the joy of being part of a team. And our team came together. I've been riding my bike my whole life. I got my first bike when I was five. My dad took me to the police auction in El Cajon, and I got a bike for $5. And I outgrew it in a week. <laughs> and so I rode it back, and I just could barely spit on it still, but I rode it back, and I rode up, and I just looked at the police officer who was standing there conducting the police auction for the next round of bikes, and he re immediately realized what was going on, as God always does. And He looked down at me and he said, Billy, come on in, take whatever you want, you just keep coming back, whatever. And that sense of 
my parents, Rocky, that policeman that day, Scott Peters, Todd Glory, and all the all, all the people who just fight so darn hard. And, and, and that was Lance Weir. Lance Weir. And when yesterday we had the final leg, and Lance and I and Andy and Carlos and Chris. Chris is a man, special forces officer, seven tours of duty in Iraq, including the last two after he had lost his leg. He said, I'm going back to get this job done. And to see, as we pulled into Camp Pendleton on that special hand cycle, surrounded by our members of the team, and to see Chris Self with one leg powering that guy in the front, right there, all right, and we came up that hill into the gate, Las Polgas Road there at Camp Pendleton, and there's this young Marine at the gate, he's checking everybody's ID, and he sees this team coming up the hill, the same way as you guys fan out into our streets today, and they're going to see our team coming up this hill, and we're not going to be denied, and that young Marine at the gate, he looked at us, he looked down at Chris Self, he looked at the other Marine in the back, and he stood erect as could be, and he just saluted and waved us right through, and it was unbelievable. And all the guys on the base honking and everything, and then when we got down, when we got down to Torrey Pines, the signal, the, the symbol of what so much of the beauty of San Diego represents, physically, but the real beauty of San Diego, who will make us so proud and so loyal. And that's who you are. And that's what we're selling you. Pride, satisfaction with our choices, and loyalty. The human attribute and personal characteristic that allows us to achieve extraordinary things because we care. And so there we were at the bottom of Torrey Pines. We had one hill to go at the end of the 620 miles. And there was Lance sitting there. He's looking up this hill. He's never climbed a hill that hard. And Lance, as we took off, the guys were down to rhythm. We were singing songs, and we were chanting, and we were going to get that job done. Because in a world of challenges, which we all live in, Scott Peters, he knows how to figure things out. He knows how to get things done. He's not going to get bogged down in nonsense and the ridiculous partisanship that has destroyed what should be the greatest team ever. And that's why I am here today. And I just want to close with one last thought on Lance and Chris Self and Andy and Carlos. Of what makes a team go? I met Lance a dozen years ago. He had already been hurt in that chair. And we were involved in helping Lance get a dog, a service dog. The dog that opened so many doors, literally and figuratively. The same way that Scott is going to do for us. Open those doors to perception, the doors to the future, so that we can get to what's next. It's hard out there. And imagine how hard it is if you, you can't move. That safety net is not a hand. We have a duty, obligation, and responsibility, and that's why I'm here today. And I'm sure that's the same reason you're here, because you believe in the bigger concept of team, life, and purpose, and obligation. One of the most spectacular parts of the ride that we just did is the ride into Big Sur when you come along the coast. And it was a spectacular perfect sunny day, hot, and there's one big giant hill, Hurricane Ridge, that you got to go over. And Lance, who had not ridden his bike in 18 years, that was going to be Lance's first big hill. And he's sitting at the bottom looking and wondering, how am I ever going to get up this? And they got up there, and they're just going, and they're just cranking and 
pushing from behind and the team is all lined up and fighting to get up there and they crest the hill. And then all of a sudden the wind is blowing 100 miles an hour there on Hurricane Ridge and they go across the top of the plateau and they come scorching down on this incredible downhill and they hit 48 miles an hour. And the grin on Lance's face that he was moving, that he was doing something, that he was contributing to the team which is, I hope, the same grin you're going to bring yourself. Now, Lance and his dog, we gave Lance his first dog, who spent nine years every day by his side, sitting there as I sit behind, beside Scott Peters, willing to do whatever it takes to get the job done. That dog, Satine, was recently retired and she came back to live with us and even though she was retired because she could no longer work she was too old she sat by my side every day just looking at me what can I do to help Bill what can I do to help Satine just before we went on the big ride Satine died and it was the saddest day and we dedicated the ride to Satine all the way down And when we got into Big Sur, after that giant climb and the incredible descent and flying at 48 miles an hour and seeing Lance so happy, when the pilot, Andy, who's got a young son of his own, who's got progressive muscular dystrophy, has been sitting in his own chair, unable to move for the last 10 years, Andy got up out of that chair, turned around, slapped Lance Weir in his that seat in the front of that chair, of that bicycle. As it opened up, Lance's new dog, Augie, jumped right in that seat and sat there, just big grin and just said, give me some food, I'm ready to go to work myself. <laughs> now I don't know if we have any food here today, but since it's still eight o'clock, we can just <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you for your patience. I want to thank you for your commitment. I want to thank, thank you for your sacrifice. And think for a moment when it's tough, when it's wet, when it's cold, and you may want to do something else and you don't think that any of this matters. I spent three years of my life lying on the ground a few years ago when my spine failed. You spend three years unable to move with your life being over. You spend a lot of time thinking about what you're going to do if I ever have a chance to get back up. That's why I'm here, because I know this guy can make a positive difference in where we're going. And as I close today, I just want to reiterate some of the thoughts that kept me going when I was at my lowest, when I just no longer believed that tomorrow was going to be better. And some of those go like this. Neil Young, instead of cursing the darkness, light a candle for where we're going. There's something ahead worth looking for. Bob Dylan, he who's not busy being born, is busy dying. Martin Luther King, we may have all come here in different boats, but we're all in the same one now. Jerry Garcia, does it really matter anyway? John Wooden, happiness begins when selfishness ends. Neil Young, what if you knew her and saw her there on the ground? How can you run when you know it? Bob Dylan, the simple twist of fate. I hear the ticking of the clock. How long must I wait? For that simple twist of fate, people tell me it's a sin to know and feel too much within. Blame it on a simple twist of fate. And finally, Bob Dylan, the challenge to all of us when I paint my masterpiece. The streets of Rome are filled with rubble. Ancient footprints are everywhere. You'd almost think 
that we're seeing double on this miserable, cold, dark day in San Diego. Please, winter. <laughs> Those mighty kings of the jungle, I can hardly stand to see you. It sure has been a long, hard climb. And as you guys go out today to paint your own masterpiece, just know that you sat through the shortest speech that Bill Walton <laughs> 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 Thanks, everybody. Go get them. And for Todd Gloria's benefit, basketball is the one with the round ball. And, uh, <laughs> so thanks, everyone, for your help. Todd, you got to go start. The both of you have to start go talking to voters. Guys, you say something about Todd first. <laughs> because as I stand behind, as I stand beside, I stand right. I had great teachers in my life. One of them was John Wood who always said is, it's not how big you are, it's how big you play. Basketball, like life, is not a game of size and strength. It's a game of skill, timing, and position. It's not how high you would jump. It's where you are when you jump. And so when I look at Tom, when I look at Scott, who, if you looked at us, you'd probably have a hard time making the connection that we're all part of the same species. But <laughs> when I look at Todd Gloria, this man, Yes. Yes. Thank you, sir.